எல்லாருக்கும் வணக்கம் ஸோ ஐம் ஐ டூ நாட் ஃப்ரீக்வெண்ட்லி ஸ்பீக் தமிழ் இன் பப்ளிக் அடிக்கடி தமிழ் பேசுறதில்லை ஸோ ஐ வில் ஸ்பீக் இன் இங்கிலீஷ் and if it is not completely clear i hope you can help me communicate so first of all so my colleague and friend dr rajaritinam has been kind enough to suggest my name uh, for that seminar organized uh, on tolkapiam by the cict and um, the tolkapiam is indeed an object very dear very dear to my heart yana uh, kurumba priyan and uh, i have felt honored to receive this invitation to be here today from professor chandra shekaran so i shall try within this hour uh, to explain to you first how i came in contact with uh, Tamish Kuruna Lulagam and uh, how I came step by step to be in a context where I attained uh, the desire to try to understand one of the books of uh, Tolkapiam the second book the Solarigaram and uh, along with a commentary composed by Senavariyar so but uh, first let me try to say how the thing began so it i imagine this is different from some other lectures which you have had because now the tamil manavan for all my life i shall be a student of tamil i cannot be perasiriar i am a student i come from far away and i will always have many many things to learn so what i know is very little what i have to learn is very big but the the thing which may be interesting for you is that i am speaking from a different perspective and uh, that in that there might be something of interest uh, to hear someone who is also a student and um so you you can see on this screen a picture of a, a beach uh, this beach no longer exists it's a picture which i took uh, almost 40 years ago uh, <coughs> it's in a village to the north of pondicherry uh, puducherry uh, so that village is called chinna uh, mudaliya savadi so it's chinna uh, mudaliya savadi kuppam and in 1981 I came to Pondicherry and uh, I went to that village <coughs> and um, I became friend with some people in that village uh, the reason I had come to Puducherry was that uh, I was at the same time uh, a student of linguistics and uh i had earlier been a student of mathematics and it was time for me to do my military service and i did not want to do a military service so i chose instead to do a civil service and i was sent as a mathematics teacher to the lycée français in pondicherry and uh, because i had some degrees in mathematics and uh, since i was at the same time a student of linguistics i decided to <coughs> to to do field work on uh, the, the, the local language and uh, so as a student of moriel i started to do rich and um, and this on the picture on the left is one of my friend from that village 40 years ago and on the other side uh, you can see something uh, 18 years later when a number of thing had happened but uh, so 
in between what had happened. Um, I heard in the original presentation, uh, my friend Dr. Ajaratina mentioned the name of Professor uh, Perasiriya Mutu Shanmugam Pillai. So in 1981, uh, Professor Mutu Shanmugam Pillai was a professor in linguistics who had retired from Madurai Kamalajar University. And uh, he had come to Pondicherry and he had opened a branch of a Dravidian Linguistic Association. <coughs> and he was offering some classes in Tamil. And uh, so he was offering classes in, um, <coughs> in spoken Tamil. So the local variety of spoken Tamil. Well, not the local variety. Uh, he had a book about spoken Tamil, but that book was uh, strongly oriented to the Tamil spoken in Madurai. And um, at the same time, I acquired another book by uh, Professor Kumara Samiraja from uh, Annamalai University, also on spoken Tamil. And I was in Puducherry and I started to make recording and um, I realized that the Tamil spoken in Pondicherry was not the same as the Tamil <coughs> spoken uh, described in the Professor Mutushan Mughal Pillay's book and uh, the standard spoken Tamil in uh, Professor Kumara Samiraja. So I was discovering the, the beautiful world of vernacular Tamil where each region has different word. And uh, later when starting to to study the Tolkapiam, thanks to a number of uh, professors, I would discover that the Tolkapiam had already spoken about Tisei Sol. And uh, so the, the Tolkapiam knew that there were many uh, dialects and all those dialects united together and uh, <clears throat> to use in common something called Sentamij, which was different from the local Tamij in e each region. And uh, so each of the Panirunilam had its own specificity, but they agreed to use some common language for poetry, which they called Saint Tamij. <coughs> and you know, at that stage in 1981, 1982, I had not yet tried to approach Saint Tamil, I had not yet tried to approach uh, Tolkapiam. And uh, I was uh, concentrating on uh, what a linguist call uh, the vernacular language, the language which people learn spontaneously without being schooled. But uh, Professor Mutu Shanmugam Pillay told me that it's important to also learn another variety of Tamil. So in this diagram, that's uh, <coughs> the variety B. So he had a second method and he told me, you have to learn spoken Tamil, but you also have to learn formal Tamil because all the books are written in formal Tamil. So nobody can be considered proficient if he does not know the two parts of the Erectae Varaku. So I said, okay, I will try to do it. And, uh, so while trying to learn these two languages, the, <coughs> the language which some people refer to as Koche Tamil, and the other one, which was maybe Yerut Tamil, um, I discovered that there was still something else. And uh, so in my diagram, that's uh, the C component. So that's the classical Tamil but what gives its name to the CICT, Central Institute for Classical Tamil. That's what is below Sem Mori. And uh, <coughs> so I have mentioned um, Professor Mutush and Mugam Pillay, but another important influence for me at that time in my discovery of a full <coughs> gamut of what falls under the name Tamil was Professor Francois Gros, 
So you can see a picture of Professor Francois Gros on the right side. So at the time, Professor Francois Gros was the director of the EFEO, the French School for Far Eastern Studies, which is the place where Dr. Rajer Atinim is posted at the moment. And uh, Professor Francois Gros, who is one of the recipients of the Kuralpidum, was well known for having translated into French. So I will, I'm talking in English today, but uh, my mother tongue is French. <coughs> and um, among the things which I will discuss today <coughs> is the importance of the interaction between all those languages. But um, let me try to stick to the topic for the time being. So we are in a, um, we are in a, in that, um, the diaglossia, uh, which I propose to extend to a triglossia because the third component is extremely important uh, from many point of view. So it's not enough to talk about diaglossia. I think one should talk about triglossia. It's not a term which is very current, but I've used it in some publications. And um, so, Professor Francois Gros had made a French translation of the Paripadal. And the Paripadal is one of the Yeptu Togei, along with the Kurun Togei, Natrinae, Gananuru, Purananuru, Kali Togei, Anguru Nuru, and Paditru Patu. And but the Paripadal, as you know, is not complete. We have, there, there were Yeruba de Paripadal, but we have received only 22. And, uh, and the Paripadal oh, is, uh, yeah. <coughs> is described in the Tolkapium. The Tolkapium has 27 section, and uh, one of them, the longest one, is called the Seyuliel. And uh, he describes uh, Tamil poetry. And the thing which is described the most in detail in the Tolkapiam, which receives uh, the biggest number of sutra, is the Kalitogei. But there is also a lot of information about the Paripadal. And um, the Paripadal has a very complex structure. It contains uh, all sorts of components. And uh, <coughs> the Tolkapiam describes those components. And so, so the Tolkapiam is, is a grammar for poetical Tamil, say Yul, which is also interested in Varak. Uh, so that's why the, the preface to the Tolkapiam refers to Varakum and Seyulum. And but uh, <clears throat> the Tamil linguist, Tamil grammarian, were never really interested in describing the A component. And uh, they were interested in describing C. And they were interested in explaining why B and C might be different. So, <clears throat> for instance, the Tolkapium explains <clears throat> uh, why you do not need to, to use honorific when talking when uh, in poetical Tamil. Uh, you don't have to say aval if you want to say avant. It's enough. But of course, in the language which everybody speaks, it's not the case. But in poetical Tamil, it's different. And the Tolkapiam explains the difference between these usages. But all these things I had not yet discovered at the time. And, um, <clears throat> but uh, progressively, I realized that uh, um, as a foreigner, it would be probably much easier to work on classical Tamil 
than to work on dialectal Tamil. Because if one wants to work on dialectal Tamil, one needs to have a very good uh, ear to, one has to hear differences which not everybody can hear. And one uh, has to make distinctions which are not made everywhere. For instance, I have been told that in Puduvay, in the schools, the children are likely to, to make mistake while distinguishing puli and puli. And uh, if one goes to Madurai, people are likely to make mistakes while distinguishing kilavi and kilavi. And uh, <clears throat> this distinction exists in, uh, in the Saint Tamil, but they do not necessarily exist in the language which people speak. But if one wants to really study Vataravarake, uh, one has to hear those things. And if one has not been born in Tamil Nadu, it's extremely difficult. So for a PhD topic, maybe it's better to stick to Saint Tamil, even though I will always be aware that uh, the only people who can really perfectly master Saint Tamil are the people for whom uh, the Iraktail Varake is a way of life. But for me, it will always remain an, uh, an inaccessible ideal. And for them, that ideal is much closer. And uh, so the only thing I can hope to bring is a, a change of perspective. And uh, if classical Tamil is a treasury of the world, there has to be people who do not have Tamil as a mother tongue, who appreciate its beauty. And, uh, <clears throat> and they can appreciate the beauty of the Tolkapium. They can appreciate the beauty of Uyatine uh, and Manar Makachute, Agrine and Manar Avarala Pirave, Ayirutinei Niseiku Manasholle, and they can appreciate the beauty of Yayum, Yayum, Yarag, Yaro, and they can appreciate the beauty of Sengalam Padakon Raunar Teita, and they can appreciate the beauty of many other Kuruntoge poem. They can appreciate the beauty of the Kural, but uh, <clears throat> much better than me. But uh, they, they also understand that since it's a classical language, it also belongs somehow to the whole of mankind, even though it's much more difficult for somebody coming from abroad because you don't, you don't have to learn one language. You don't have to learn two languages. You have to learn three languages. You have to learn <coughs> the local language, the Vattara Varaku. You have to learn Yerut Tamil. And you have to learn Saint Tamil. And um, so in 1983, 1984, after making uh, a master thesis in linguistics, which was about spoken Tamil, uh, about the dialect spoken in Pondicherry. After making an MPhil thesis, which was also about uh, uh, spoken Tamil, and also to some extent uh, irritated Tamil, <coughs> and which was about Igarachutu, uh, Agarasutu, Ugarachutu, so deictic in Tamil, I decided that maybe I should take a more reasonable topic for a PhD topic. And uh, since uh, Professor Shanmugam Pillay had been kind enough to read with me uh, the beginning of Tolkapiam uh, Soladigaram, so he had spent a number of hours reading with me uh, Kilavi Akkam. 
and maybe we went up to Vetrimayen. And since at the same time, I had uh, studied with a, a scholar in a, in a small town, which is north of Puduvei, called Mutial Petei. So that scholar's name was Tamil Avel, and he was living in uh, Mutial Pet, and uh, he was a blind man, and, uh, but he was a Pulavar. And with him, I had read the whole of Nanul, with <coughs> part of a Virtue So I'd made a very serious effort at <coughs> trying to, to make some progress <coughs> in, um, in learning classical Tamil. And, um, and then I was also encouraged by Professor Francois Gros, who had a seminar in Paris where we were reading classical texts. We were reading uh, Pali Pardal. We were reading uh, Natrine. And we were also reading texts like uh, Tevaram because, uh, well, I, I know that uh, Tevaram does not fall in the list of the 41 texts which I studied uh, on the Semmori. I know that there is a list of text based on uh, the chronology, but from my point of view, Tevaram, La Nala Ira Divya Prabandam are part of Semmori, and Todudeya uh, Sevian for me is uh, Saint Amish, even though it is not as old as the Yeputoge, as the Pate Pate, as the Tolkapium. So for me, it is part of uh, Saint Amish. And, um, and I think that Sambandar himself and Sundarar himself, at the end of the hymns, they also refer to Saint Tamij, and they, they say that they think they are proficient in Saint Tamij. And uh, so <clears throat> here on this uh, screen, you can see on the right side a small book, which I must have bought in 1983. And it's, um, you can see here the title page of that book. So, <clears throat> so it says, Sena Vareyar Ureyode, Yash Parat Nalur, Ar Muga Navalar, Avar Galal. And then uh, that says that uh, <clears throat> they consulted many manuscripts and they published that commentary of Tolkapiam uh, Saladigaram <coughs> along with along with a commentary by Sina Varial. And so then my thesis consists in a translation of uh, that um, Soladigaram. So I translated all the 463 sutras of the Soladigaram. And I also translated the whole of the, um, <clears throat> of the commentary. So that was a, a small book which I carried in my pocket for many years uh, because um, I started to work on the translation in, uh, in maybe 1984. And I finally submitted my thesis in 1990. And uh, <clears throat> so the, the thesis is the book, which is on the left side. The book translated is on the right side. And then um, in 1984, uh, this came as a book and uh, <clears throat> I had been lucky enough to, to revise my translation with a great scholar who has been also mentioned by uh, Raja Etinam. Uh, so you can see this picture must have been taken in 1999. But you can see on the, on the right side, I'm recording uh, TV Gopalayir and uh, I think I may have been recording some, uh, some Kalitoge poem, which he, he was reciting. I thought 
it would be good to have in his voice uh, the sound of Kalitogay. He was very fond of Kalitogay. So I recorded all the 150 Kalitogay. And I also recorded the whole of the Pali Padel uh, as uh, chanted by him. And uh, <clears throat> so the difference between the physics, which is here, and the book, which is here, is that uh, I, I spent many, many hours with him. And uh, so I was talking in Tamil with him. And I was asking in, in Tamil question from him. I was, let us say, clarifying my doubts. Let's say, I am Tirdel. Um, and uh, I had uh, the experience of asking many questions from Tamil scholars in Tamil. That's how I had done while reading Nanul with Tamil Ravel in Mukhel Perte. So I was asking and uh, <coughs> Gopalier could not read what I had written in French. Uh, I thought it was better to avoid English for communicating with him. And uh, so I was communicating in Tamil. Um, <clears throat> Later, of course, I had to somehow change my perspective. Uh, we are in the 21st century. And um, we, we are in a, in a period where the English language has, do, has become very dominant. English dominates everything. And so every citizen of this planet has to master more than one language so in the case of Tamil, that would mean mastering many, many languages. So all the component of a triglossia, but also mastering English and uh, probably other Indian languages also. And uh, <clears throat> using English, which is not my mother tongue, which is not your mother tongue for communicating about a topic which probably cannot be perfectly expressed in English. <clears throat> so you can see on this screen a diagram which shows the chronology of Tamil sources as seen from an external point of view. So, <clears throat> um, so it's, uh, I've taken this diagram from an article which I'm in the process of writing, and uh, which is an article about the first uh, dictionary made by a foreigner about uh, Tamil. And that dictionary was uh, printed in 1679, and uh, a single copy of a dictionary is preserved in Rome in the Vatican Library. And uh, the man who compiled that dictionary came from Portugal, and his name was Anton de Proença. And uh, in his dictionary, we have explanations about Tamil words, which are written in Portuguese. And so it's the first bilingual uh, dictionary of Tamil. So it's, it's the first serious uh, uh, lexicographical contact between Tamil and European languages. And uh, <clears throat> in my diagram, uh, <clears throat> it corresponds to, I do not know whether um, A cursor is visible, um, but uh, you can see on the left side um, an abbreviation which says VTCSP, which means Vocabulario Tamulico Coma Significação Portuguesa. And before that, there is something which says HH, 
and it's a grammar by Henrique Henriquez. So these people had come by boat and they had landed in Cochin and then they had started to explore <coughs> um, South India. Of course, their purpose in coming <coughs> was not a linguistic purpose. They were coming for something else. They were coming for trade and some of them were coming for religious purpose. But I'm abstracting myself from this and I consider only the linguistic aspect. So the linguistic contact between two languages. So we have a contact between T, which is Tamil and P, which is Portuguese. And before that, what we have is contact between T as a meta language, as a meta language, and T, which is Tamil, as an object language. So people trying to describe Tamil by means of Tamil. And later we have people trying to describe Tamil by means of Portuguese. And uh, <clears throat> so other European coming to South India thought, well, it's very convenient to use Portuguese. So people coming from France, people coming from Italy, like Besky, uh, started to use Portuguese to write uh, about Tamil. But at some point they decided, well, maybe Portuguese is not uh, the ideal language because not everybody knows Portuguese. And there are more people who know Latin. So at some point, they decided to use another language. And uh, <clears throat> that other language was Latin. And Besky wrote uh, Grammatica Latino Tamulica. And then some other people coming from Germany or from Denmark and coming to Trankabar, Tarangambari, uh, started to describe Tamil also using Latin. And uh, Siegenberg is one of them. And then uh, at some point, that was in the 18th century, and at some point, uh, Latin somehow fell out of use and English became dominant. And so people abandoned the description which had made into Portuguese or Latin, or rather they translated them into English. And the younger people did not know what had existed before, they forgot about it. And progressively English became the dominant language. But the fact that we use English does not mean that we want to abandon our own language. And uh, we want at the same time to preserve our own language. We want to preserve Tamil. I want to preserve French. And uh, so that's, that's the question you see on top of this screen, a question, why my thesis <coughs> on Tamil had to be written in French and not in English, although English is the lingua franca. Um, I am not sure how much of what I say uh, goes through to everyone in this audience. I can see that I've been talking now for maybe 45 minutes or 40 minutes and uh, I do not know whether what I'm saying is recorded or not. Uh, I do not know whether uh, some attempt will be made at translate what I'm saying, but I've been trying to communicate. And uh, I'm, because I'm having some other parameters in mind, I'm having uh, uh, in mind that uh, the, the real knowledge is the knowledge which one has in one's mother tongue. But that real knowledge as one has to be able to share with people who have other tongues in another language, which is the lingua franca. But the lingua franca should not erase 
uh, mother tongues. It should remain in its place. So we should have a coexistence. So even though I am talking at the moment in English, the topic which I am discussing is the defense of language which are not English and uh, what is the way to have these things coexist. And uh, <coughs> this diagram, um, which is from an article submitted to a, journal, to a Portuguese journal, but in English, uh, and discussing in the conclusion uh, how it is possible for people who have all sorts of languages, which is why I've called X, uh, to be in direct contact with uh, other language. So here the, the, the target language being Tamil. And um, so because the, the reach, the, the goal of uh, linguistic studies, the goal of philological studies is not to create some knowledge which will be language independent. We do not want to use languages in order to erase language. We want to preserve language. And uh, while preserving those languages, we study objects which are more abstract, which are the common features between distinct languages. But those common features would not exist if this language on which they are based did not exist. So let me try to, to go a little faster. Um, because I have many more slides, but uh, I, am, I thought maybe it's important to explain the purpose rather than to go into too many technical details, which I may not have the words to, to convey directly in Tamil. Um, so this was meant at, when I prepared the, the PowerPoint presentation. I was not yet sure how fast thing, thing would go. And uh, this was meant to show uh, some of the thing I had done uh, between my work on the preliminary work on the Tolka PM and uh, on the, the Tamil grammatical tradition and some later work. Uh, I thought I had to broaden my horizon and broadening my horizon consistent, for instance, in preparing uh, an electronic edition <coughs> of a translation of a Tevaram, which had been uh, prepared by a scholar, Via Subramania Iyer, at uh, the French Institute of Pondicherry, and which had remained unpublished. So there was a 4,000 pages manuscript, which was unpublished. And I thought that manuscript had to reach its audience because it was useful for people all around the world and to, to have a better knowledge about the Tevaram. And um, the Tevaram is a beautiful collection of hymns, which is for me part of Saint Tamil, even though it may not be technically Saint Tamil. And, but, um, and I, I thought what I could contribute as a student of Tamil was to make it more accessible to make it as a hypertext, to make a concordance. Uh, so I told you my initial training was in mathematics. Uh, so I'm, for me, uh, computer languages are uh, natural. And uh, so I created the concordance for the Tevaram. And I made uh, the Tevaram as a hypertext hyper connection of, of links. And, um, and uh, recently, um, we have in, uh, in Europe a number of uh, palm leaf manuscripts. And uh, <clears throat> one of the challenges of um, modern days is called digital humanities. So you are at Semmori. So 
you are part of a set which includes the Tamil Virtual University and the Tamil Virtual Academy. And the Tamil Virtual Academy has put online <coughs> some published manuscript <coughs> and has put online a number of texts, some edition of classics. The Tamil Virtual Academy has put online the Kalitoge in the edition by Ananda Ramayir, has put online the Tolkapium uh, with some commentary, and has also put online some published manuscript image. And all around the world, uh, there are libraries which have a manuscript collection, and Paris is uh, one such place. And in Paris, there is a collection of 800 Tamil Palm leaf manuscripts. And some of them are Tevaram, some of them are Ilakkanam. There are some Tolkapiam manuscript, there are some Nachinarkinian manuscript, there are some Partiel manuscript, Venba Partiel, there are some Virasurium manuscript, there are some Tiruvilayadat Puranam manuscript. And <coughs> the challenge nowadays is to make these manuscripts interesting to the younger generation, to make them accessible. Uh, and uh, as we know, the modern world is dominated by uh, uh, smartphones. Uh, everybody wants to have knowledge immediately accessible to them on the smartphone. So we have to format the content of uh, the past so like it will be accessible. And uh, so there is a project which is currently underway for cataloging the Palif manuscript of the Bibliothèque Nationale de France. And uh, for instance, Dr. Rajiratinam has come to Paris, has examined some of the manuscript of uh, the BNF. And uh, these exchange with, between Tamil Nadu and Paris, in fact, have some, uh, are not so recent. In the 19th century, there was a French scholar called Julien Vincent. He was teaching Tamil in Paris. Uh, he had spent his childhood in Karikal, so he was uh, very fluent in Tamil. And he was uh, also cataloging the, the manuscript in the Paris collection. Uh, what you see on screen is a manuscript of uh, Agatia Tevara Tiratu. And I have put on screen uh, the one palm leaf from a manuscript which is in Paris, on which you can see the Tevaram hymn which starts with Veyuru Toli Pangan. It's that famous hymn in which uh, you, <clears throat> so here is a, a transcription of that hymn, Veyuru Toli Pangan, uh, which is of course easier to read like this, Veyuru Toli Pangan, Vidamunda Kandan, Miganalla Vinay Taravi. And um, in this hymn, there is the famous first enumeration of the days of the week. Of course, it's, uh, the, it's part of the enumeration of the nine planets, the Navagraha. But uh, so coming back to the BNF, there is this manuscript, and there are many other manuscripts. And they, they, at the time when Julien Vincent was cataloging the BNF manuscript, he, he came in touch with Uwe Saminadayir. And he wrote a letter to Uwe Saminadayir complimenting him on uh, his edition of Sivagas in Dharmani. And uh, Uwe Saminadayir was very pleased. And uh, he wrote back to Julien Vincent. And then Julien Masson wrote back. <coughs> and those letters have been published <coughs> in Chennai by uh, Venkata Salapati. He has published the letters uh, in the collection Uwe Saminayir. And we have those letters exchanged by uh, uh, Vincent and Uwe Saminayir. And uh, Uwe Saminayir asked Julien Vincent, do you have a manuscript of Sila Padigaram? Because he was editing Sila Padigaram. And uh, Julien Vincent answered, we don't have a manuscript of Silla Badigaram, but we have a manuscript of Mani Megale. And uh, 
So Uwe Sanedayer said, can you copy for me part of that manuscript? So, and Julien Lasson said, of course, yes, I will do it. And he copied part of the manuscript. And uh, in his edition of Mani Megale, uh, Uwe Sanedayer refers to the, his correspondence with Julien Vincent. And so when uh, Dr. Adjaretinam came to Paris, he was somehow continuing that tradition of exchange between Paris and Tamil Nadu. And uh, <clears throat> when I'm uh, making that difficult presentation via Zoom, because uh, it's, it's somehow frustrating to speak in front of a screen and not to see the people directly, but we imagine them. We try to imagine how they feel and we do our level best for communicating, for conveying some enthusiasm, some who come, some uh, our feeling that this is an important task, but we have to communicate. And, uh, <clears throat> and which is why I'm trying to explain to you why the Paul Carpium is important for me, why it's important for many people around me. And I may not be very successful because I do it in English, which is paradoxical. I would much prefer to be able to speak fast in Tamil, to convey quickly some meaning, but what we cannot convey fast orally, sometimes we can convey in writing, we can convey by preparing uh, corpora, online corpora, and that's the goal of digital humanities. We make some very small steps and then suddenly it creates uh, a huge amount of data. And then the challenge is how to make that data available to the younger generation, how to convey to the younger generation that this is something precious. This is Aragu, this is Vanapu, and <coughs> this is to be preserved. So here is another example of some attempt. So here, <coughs> you can see on, on screen a digital image, which is in fact an SVG graphic. Um, an SVG graphic. Uh, SVG is a dialect of XML. Uh, XML is, uh, some of you know about it, have, uh, have heard about it. XML is uh, what uh, makes so many things possible because it's an explicit encoding of many things. So I've tried to encode uh, the first lift of a manuscript which is preserved in Tiruvavaru Durei, Adinam, and it's a manuscript of Senavarayam. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, I've tried to, uh, so you can read the beginning. Um, we are Tine and Manar Makachute. And of course, uh, it's not so easy to read because as you can see, there are no pulley. So we have a, on the first line, we have U, well, this has not changed. Ya, this has not changed. And then a symbol, which could be a call. Or, so we could read Uya, or which can be Ra, we could read Uya Ra. And uh, which could be um, R with Puli. And in fact, we have to read We Are Tine. And uh, so somebody who examines the manuscript for the first time has to get used to this. And of course, people prefer to read it in modernized um, script. But uh, if nobody knew how to read manuscript, uh, nobody could read this. So younger people have to be taught how to read this thing. So one of the challenges is to create instruments for making younger people capable of reading these things. And uh, younger people also have to learn 
how to read other types of scripts. So younger people who want to study the Tivya Prabandham, so when, um, <coughs> all the hymns of Namalvar, Periyarvar, etc., uh, should be capable of reading the commentaries uh, to those hymns. So they should also be able to read the Granta script because many manuscripts have preserved explanations in a mixed language. And uh, whether one likes it or not, these documents exist and some people have to be capable of reading them. Uh, we, we can change our writing system, but we should not erase the past. The past has to remain accessible. And uh, we may not use that teutu, but we have to be capable of reading that teutu. We have to be capable of reading the Velvik Uri plate, even though that teutu is not used now. We have to be able to read Tamil Brahmi, even though Tamil Brahmi is not used now. And uh, so now um, I'm somehow coming to what uh, would have been the heart of my talk if it had been in a direct um, situation of contact. I wanted to, to talk about the first article which I wrote uh, for a linguistic uh, collection of articles. I wrote this article in 1989, even before finishing my, uh, my thesis. And it was about the, the particle O. And uh, <coughs> um, but um, the paradox is uh, how can I explain in Tamil or in English what it means to explain to a French audience what Tamil texts talk about. So um, the, we, we are talking about things which are not necessarily visible. We are talking about things uh, which are part of a an exchange between human beings. And but uh, the exchange are not talked about, they are practiced. And uh, so at that time I was trying to explain why in the Tolka PM there is a sutra which says, Pirinile Vinave, Yedil Bare, Uri say, Terinile Kilavi, Sira Poloto Rei. So it's a short sutra, but explaining to the French audience why there would be such a sutra in, in a Tamil grammar about a variety of Tamil, which is no longer used, but which has been very carefully preserved. Uh, Cherish like gold, bon pour le. Uh, and uh, it would take maybe 10 pages to explain to a Tamil, to a French audience, what such a sutra means. And now explaining to a Tamil audience what it means to explain to a French audience what is in the Tamil text is talking about, in fact, what is a situation of communication. And uh, so the challenge becomes how to make communication possible, how to create a setting where there can be students who come from Tamil Nadu to Europe and uh, understand what it means to see their own country with outsiders' eyes what it means to send students from Europe to Tamil Nadu and having to understand the perspective, the very specific perspective, but uh, making it as something which can be understood outside the borders of Tamil Nadu. These are the challenges. 
Um, so I think I've reached uh, the limit of a duration. So let me show some of the title which I would have liked to talk about. Uh, I would have to talk, like to talk about the importance of making concordances. Uh, this is the entry point in the concordance of the total KPM. So this is a computer generated uh, collection of text. It contains information about uh, <clears throat> 5,400 distinct words and the 20,700 occurrences of these words. So for instance, here, we, you can see the six occurrences in the talk APM of a word Yedir Mare. So concordances are very useful, but never, nobody ever reads a concordance from starting point to end. Uh, but it allows to immediately access the various part of the text. So you, we use the complete knowledge of the machine to help our incomplete human knowledge. And uh, I also wanted to talk about um, my first article after my thesis. It was an article in French for which the title was Terminology Transparent et Formalisme Caché. So, which means transparent terminology. So, the challenge is uh, we have Tamil language, we have Tamil literature, we have Tamil grammar, Tamil ilakkanam. So, that's one first challenge learning Tamil ilakkanam. But then on this, there is another challenge, which is to understand what it means to create a language, a grammar. What is a grammar as an object? And uh, nowadays, uh, we are surrounded by computers. Computers are made possible because there are computer languages. And computer languages exist only because there are compilers. There is an, a grammar somehow resembles a compiler. Uh, writing a grammar for the language means writing a compiler. And it means constructing some abstract knowledge, which people know by practice, but they don't know what they know. They don't know how, what knowing means. They know, but they have to learn what it means to know. And that is what the point is in studying metalanguage. And uh, in this, I had taken some example. Uh, one was about, um, well, this is in transliteration, but this, what this is about is this. Uh, you know this text, all of you. So this is Panambaranar Badvetolkapian. And on the right side, we have a commentary by Nachina Arkinia. And uh, so in my article, I am trying to explain that uh, what a commentator, medieval commentator like Nachina Arkinia does is that he translates, you see, long A, language A, long B, long B, language B. He translates from one language to another one. So Varavengaran Tenkumari is one language. And Varakinkan Vengaramum Tekitkat Kumari Yumagiya Aviren LA, etc. This is another language. This is supposed to be the same, but this is a translation. These are two, but for a native Tamil speaker, you think these are the words. This is the meaning, sol porul. But for from an outsiders, they are both words. So if you're a foreigner, both are objects to be learned. For you, you are inside one and you see the other one. So that's one thing. Other thing which are invisible, hidden formalism, uh, we have things like it, uh, idana de idu. 
This is extracted from some Tolkapiam Sutra. Inna do idu. And idani nitidu. So, so the first itu is taken from a Tolkapiam Sutra, which said, Yarkei porulei itchane kilatal. So the question I'm examining in this article is, what do we do when we, when we, the Tolkapiam uses this thing? Uh, the Tolkapiam is using some abstract mechanism, which is transparent if you're a native Tamil speaker, but if you are a foreigner, you, you have to learn how these things are done. And it's a, it's a very beautiful thing. It's a beautiful form of meta-language. And uh, it would be a pity to throw it away to say, uh, this is dépassé, uh, this is possible, uh, modern linguistics is better. No, these things are very, very good, very beautiful. And idana de idu, idana de idu is something which is the abstract formula inside yane ade kodu. So it idana de idu is a algebraic formula uh, which expresses the structure of this. And idanin um, itu idu. This he expresses the abstract formula of a sentence like ka keit karidu kalamparam. So uh, I'm afraid I have probably failed to explain what I wanted to explain, but I have tried to express uh, through my uh, enthusiasm, which I hope you perceive. So the beauty and the complexity of this, why I think it's very important, <coughs> and why it's a very important challenge uh, to, to communicate this beauty to the next generation in a way which is accessible for them, how to make it possible for people who are 15, 20, to perceive the same enthusiasm which was felt by the students of Ilakanam and uh, of many other things in the past centuries, and that uh, all that knowledge will not be lost, and that mother tongue will continue to prosper, and that the lingua franca will not erase the mother tongue, and which we all will continue to have several languages and to try to communicate. So thank you for your patience. Yes, Discussion, sir. Ten minutes discussion. Uh, they have uh, asked questions. Oh, well, of course, I, I know about Muttamil. I know that Yali uh, say Naragam, but uh, I don't think that Tolkapiam is about Tisei Tamil. Uh, Tolkapiam knew that Tisei Tamil existed. There are a few references to Tisei Tamil. And uh, I think we can suppose that uh, Paripadal was, we know that Paripadal was sung because in the manuscript, they tell us who is the musician, what is the pun, so they tell us uh, for this song with the pan is no tiram. And uh, so we know the name of some pans like no tiram, ne tiram, etc. And um, but I don't think that Tolkapium itself was about Isai Tamil. I think they in, in knew about Isai Tamil, but there were other treaties. And unfortunately, those treaties have been lost. 
And we have references to the name of some treaties, uh, like uh, Issei Nunukam, etc. But uh, um, and of course, I, I know that Issei Marabu is very important. And uh, I'm, that's why when I studied the Tevaram, I try to give all possible information about uh, <coughs> the pan which I use for singing the Tevaram. And uh, I know that, for instance, the Tiruvirutam was sung using a pan which corresponds to the modern Bhairavi. But uh, I don't think that Tolkapiam itself tells us uh, something precise about uh, Issei. And uh, he knows that there were knowledgeable people in music. Um, I know that uh, the Leivarnar has explained that uh, when the word varam is used in the, the, in the Tolkapiam, it can refer to a musical composition, which uh, some movement in a musical composition, uh, because a musical composition would have several movements, and one of them would be called the varam. And uh, Tolkapiam knew about it. And, uh, it's possible that there is an allusion to that word, but I don't think we can say something about Issei Marabu uh, precisely based on Tolkapium. Uh, we know that uh, in the Karu uh, Porul, um, there is something about uh, Issei, about Yar, but uh, we simply know that it existed, but, but I don't think we can uh, directly uh, get knowledge on uh, Issei Tamish from the Tolkapiam. Uh, Tolkapiam is Iyat Tamish. And he also knows about Naraga Tamil, but he, that's not his field. That field was for some other scholars of him. Does that answer the question? <laughs> The question about Vannam. Vannam is, Vannam is a very complicated term. Uh, in the Tolkapiam, in the Seyulia, there are uh, 20 Vannam, uh, Pa Vannam, Ta Vannam. And uh, so that's one exception for, for Vannam. And uh, personally, I enjoy the Uruttu Vannam, uh, Murugu Vannam. And uh, although for me, it's not easy uh, to recite some verse which is in Uruttu Vannam because my tongue is not. Uh, uh, good enough, but as a listener, I enjoy it. And uh, but uh, that's uh, one aspect of Vannam. But there are other aspects of Vannam. If we read the Silapadikaram commentary by Adiyar Kunallar, he gives explanation about Vannam in the realm of Issei. And uh, this sense of Vannam might be different. And uh, so, and also in the, at the beginning of the uh, Alangara Paralam in the Vira Suryam, uh, we have some use of Vannam, but whether he meant exactly the same thing, uh, possibly, but we are not completely sure because uh, in the preceding Paralam, he enumerates the 20 Vannam of uh, Tolkapiam, but he puts them in a different order and he does not say anything about them, he just names them. So, <coughs> Vandam is a very, very complicated uh, topic. Yeah, yeah. So now, vote of thanks. What? Vote of thanks. Oh. Yeah.
சொற்பொழிவு தொல்காப்பிய இலக்கண வரலாறு என்ற சொற்பொழிவு சிறு ஒரு முன்னுரையாகவும் சிறப்பான ஒரு ஆய்வினை வழங்கிய வடிகல் துறையின் பேராசிரியர் அவர்களுக்கு நிறுவனத்தின் சார்பாகவும் பணியாளர் சார்பாகவும் நன்றி கண்ட வணக்கத்தை தெரிந்துள்ளோம் இந்த தொல்காப்பிய பதிப்புகள் மழவை மகாலிங்கர் ஐயர் எண்ணூத்தி ஆயிரத்தி எண்ணூத்தி நாற்பத்தி ஏழு தொடங்கி இரண்டாயிரத்தி பதிமூணு வரை கிட்டத்தட்ட ஏறத்தழ தமிழ் நூல்கள் ஐநூத்தி எழுபத்தி ஐந்து நூல்கள் தொல்காப்பியம் தொடர்பாக ஆய்வு செய்யப்பட்டிருக்கிறது ஆங்கிலத்தில் ஐம்பத்தி நான்கு நூல்கள் மொழிபெயர்ப்பு பதிவு வந்திருக்கின்றன முன் முனைவர் பட்டம் எம் பில் ஆய்வேடு எழுபது ஆய்வேடுகள் முனைவர் பட்டம் நூத்தி தொண்ணூத்தி ஏழு ஆய்வேடுகள் ஆய்வு கட்டுரைகள் இரண்டாயிரத்தி ஐநூத்தி நாற்பத்தி நான்கு தமிழ் மொழியில் வந்த ஆங்கில கட்டுரையும் ஆங்கில மொழியில் முன்னூத்தி அறுபத்தி ஆறு ஆய்வு கட்டுரைகளும் வந்திருக்கிறது இது என்ன ஒரு சிறப்பு என்றால் கிட்டத்தட்ட தமிழகத்தில் உள்ள பல்கள் அனைத்திலும் ஐயாயிரத்துக்கு மேற்பட்ட முனைவர் ஆய்வு ஆய்வுகள் தொகுத்த பொழுது வெறும் நூத்தி ஐம்பத்தி ஐந்து நபர்கள் மட்டும்தான் தொழில்காப்பு தொடர்பாக ஆய்வு செய்திருக்கிறார்கள் இலக்கண ஆய்வு மிக மிக புரிந்து கொண்டு வருகிறது அந்த ஒரு நோக்கம் நிறைவேற வேண்டும் என்ற எண்ணத்தில் தான் செம்மொழி தமிழ் நிறுவனம் தொல்காப்பியம் தொடர்பான ஆய்வுகளையும் போக்குகளையும் மாணவர்களுக்கு கொண்டு செல்ல வேண்டும் என்று இப்பயிலரங்கினை நடத்தி கொண்டிருக்கிறது என்று கூறி வருகிற அனைவருக்கும் நன்றியை வெறுத்து அடுத்த அமர்வு மூன்று நாற்பத்தி ஐந்துக்கு தொடங்க என்பதை கூறிக்கொள்வது So is this the end of the meeting? Yes. yes. So, Mika Nandri, Vidai Perugire, Mindum Sandipum, Vanakkam. Mindum Sandipum. Mindum Sandipum.